Somebody help me singing, you are your way. 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 Alpha. your name we thank you Lord Jesus because you are Yahweh you are Alpha you are Omega we thank you Lord God for your goodness we thank you Lord Jesus Lord Jesus, we honor you. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. We thank you for your help, for guiding us and for speaking unto us, molding us, and for helping us, Lord God, to go your ways, understand your ways. And please you in all of our ways. We ask that you take control, that you speak unto us. We ask that you take control, that you lift your name high, high and higher among us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have eaten some cats. So, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a language, it's a way of talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, let's they put for me on the screen the word of God, the message he has given unto us today. Amen. Called by a new name. Hallelujah. Last time I was uh, sharing with uh, some brethren, and as I was sharing with them, the Lord has uh, even pulled out even more on the understanding of a new name and why we are to, to have that new name that he gives unto us that is written upon the stone. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into the book of uh, Isaiah without uh, Jew. We're going to go in the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, and we're going to read from verse one so if you have your bible we reading from the king james and uh, we also read from the amplified version so where you at if you have your bible take with us the book of isaiah chapter uh, chapter 62 verse 1 please isaiah chapter 62 verse 1 for zion's sake will i not hold my peace and for jerusalem's sake i will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 3. Verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the, in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, 
neither shall thy neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hebzi, Hebziba, and thy land Bela. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me the same from verse 1 in the Amplified Version of uh, Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah mm -hmm. 62 mm -hmm. verse 1, Amplified mm -hmm. Version. For Zion's sake, I, Isaiah, will not be silent. Mm -hmm. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet mm -hmm. until her righteousness and vindication go forth mm -hmm. as brightness mm -hmm. and her salvation goes forth like a burning torch. Hallelujah. Amen. For Zion's sake, I, Isaiah, will not be silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet until a righteousness and vindication go forth as brightness and her salvation go forth like a burning torch. Verse 2. Verse 2. The nations will see your righteousness mm -hmm. and vindication by God mm -hmm. and all kings will see your glory mm -hmm. and you will be called by a new name mm -hmm. which the mouth of the Lord will, de will designate. And you will be called by a new name which the, which the mouth of the Lord will designate. designate. Go ahead. Verse 3. You will also be considered a crown of glory. You will also be considered a crown of glory. And splendor, and splendor in the hand of in the, the hand of the Lord. And a royal diadem. And a royal diadem. Exceedingly, exceedingly beautiful, beautiful. In the hand of your in God. In the hand of your God. Verse 4. It, it will no longer be said of you, Judah. It will no longer be said of you, Judah. Azuba. Azuba, abandon, which means abandon, or. Nor will it any longer be said of your land. Oh, nor will it any longer be said of your land. Shemama. Shemama. Which means desolate. Which means desolate. But you will be called. But you will be called. F Ziba. F Ziba. Which means my delight. Which means my delight is in her. Is in her. You know the same word did the Lord spoke saying, "This is my beloved in whom I am well pleased." F Ziba. F F F Ziba. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. And your land, and your land married, married, uh -huh. for the Lord delights in for you. the Lord delights in you. you, and to him your land will be married, uh -huh. owned and protected by the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus is giving unto us the word of turn around. He says, "You will be called." By a new name that the mouth of the Lord will pronounce. <laughs> we all know the story of the names. It started with Adam. Hallelujah. He told to Adam, I wanted to bring the animals to Adam to see how he will name it. How he will call it. Hallelujah. The names that Adam gave, that's the name that we have today. Because nothing is new under the earth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Nobody came up with a new name. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the only new name that the word of God said no one knows except the Lord. And the one to whom it is given is the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Now, to come in the book of Isaiah 62, the Lord said that he will no longer be said of you, Judah. What means Judah? Judah means praise. Hallelujah. So, you were in praise. The things that God has placed in your hand were working. And you see, when things work, it is normal to give thanks to God. Uh, even I'm saying. When things doesn't work, it's also normal to give thanks to God. But you understand with me that your thank giving, when things work, <laughs> between you and I, it is greater. <laughs> 
When things does not work, it is a thanksgiving because he is faithful. When things work well, it is a thanksgiving because you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But even though you thank God at all time, regardless of the circumstances, he said that there is a time when you thank him because of the praise. He says, you will ask and you will receive and your joy will be. Hallelujah. So there is a joy that is completed, that is full, when you have seen the goodness of the Lord be manifested as you have asked. That's what the Lord Jesus said. You will ask and you will receive and your joy will be full and complete. Isaiah 62 reminds us of who we are in the Lord. And oftentimes, just like the word of God talks about Abraham, who were Abraham, Sarai, who became Sarah, even though Saul did not become Paul, Saul was the name like James in English that is called what? Jacques in French. When you read the word of God, you see that Saul also called Paul, not Saul who was renamed Paul. I have heard oftentimes the teaching that, uh, well, you know, we have all heard that. Our Paul was now Saul, sorry, he was transformed and then called now Paul. No, no, it's incorrect. The Greek word for also called is like a name that is known in Hebrew and the version named in Greek. Because remember, Paul was not only a Hebrew boy, he was also a Roman. Hallelujah. So being a Roman, you will want to understand that he has a Jew citizenship, so he was able to carry the Greek name of his Hebrew name, which is very different from Abraham, who were Abraham. Anyway, so we do see into the same thing on how Israel were before what? Jacob. So we understand already that when God is about to shift the life of somebody, he gives to the person a name that will also characterize the the what? The destiny of the person. The, the glory. When Isaiah saw in the spirit, he said, I saw the child shall be called Emmanuel. But you all agree he was not named Emmanuel. Emmanuel was only the glory of who the child will be. The characteristic of his glory. But when he was to be named, the word of the Lord tells us that he shall be named Jesus, which means God saves. So not only God with us, but God will step into and saves us. And the name of the Lord Jesus has become, as we know, the name that is above all or the name in which men shall call and be saved. What does it mean for you and I? You see... You cannot name a thing until God has given you the inspiration by his own spirit. I repeat again. You cannot name a thing until God has given you an inspiration by his own spirit. Open up your spirit. Open up the revelation. So you'll be able to identify anything that you name, you can dominate. Does it make sense? Anything that you can name, anything you can put a name on, you can rule over. So the Lord says, he's going to give you a new name. That new name, according to the word of God in the book of Revelation, it says, he says, get me in Revelation chapter 2. Give me on verse 17. Would you please read for us Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. He who has an ear, he who has an ear, let him hear, let him hear and heed, and heed what the Spirit says to the church. What the Spirit says to the churches, which churches? We and all. Amen. Continue. To him who overcomes. The world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God. To him who overcomes. Notice something. It says, to the one who overcomes. So for you to receive, you got to overcome. To the one who overcomes, it says, go ahead. To him. To him, I will. Give 
give the privilege of mm. eating some of the hidden manna. I will give the privilege of eating some of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone. And I will give him a white stone. With a new name. and With a new name. Mm -hmm. Engraved on the stone. Engraved on the stone. Which no one knows. Which no one knows. Except the one who receives. Except the one who receives it. it. So to he who overcome will be given some of the hidden manna. And to him who overcome will be given a white stone on which stone will be written a new name that no one knows engraved unto it by the one who received it. What does it mean for us? Isaiah tells us some of the hint. Let's go back in 62. Isaiah chapter 62, you can give us from verse 1 again. Uh, no, sorry, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 62, starting from verse 2. Uh-huh. The nation will see your righteousness. The nation will see your righteousness. And vindication. And vindication by God. by God. People of God. He says, the one who overcomes, he will give a new name here he said the nation will see your righteousness how because you will overcome the world through the righteousness of christ let me put it simple your uprightness of heart as you do and you live in this world the word of god says he will recompense your walk in him are you what i'm saying you will not walk in this earth in uprightness of life, and the Lord will just take you to go in heaven. He will give you recompense. For it says that no one who has forsaken shall not receive in where? In this age and in the... Am I right? So the recompenses of the Lord are not only for heaven. It is also to dominate over the earth. But for it to happen, you need to receive a name. See, when a person is a man, is a candidate, is a just person or a citizen, when he receives a new name, he enters the presidency, they call him what? President. You feel know what I'm saying? That name will characterize what type of mental he carries and what type of operation he will be doing. So when they say President so so and so, because of the identification of the name tagged to his own name, the carrying of the power is different. When they say this is the assembly of the head of states, yeah, you know, the, the minister cannot go there. You know what I'm saying? You have to have a name that identifies that you can have access to certain area. If that name is not tagged on you, you agree with me, you cannot access certain area. But that name, for it to be tagged, it has to be made in the way where you are, um, you, uh, that you, merit. Uh, you deserve it. Because you see, in a deserve of what we're talking about, it says to whom who overcomes. So the prerequisite is that the word of God in you, the life of Christ in you, the righteousness of Christ in you must remain until the people of the world will see through the word of God that he will change you from a spot of a statue to another statue by giving you a new name. Now that new name will carry both your assignment and your destiny. See, when David was called David, he was not able to sit upon the throne. But when he was called what? King David. You feel what I'm saying? Then he was able to rule and sit over the throne on the throne and rule the affair of Judah. What is the name that God has given you in order for you to break through and then for you to not only overcome, but to receive, according to the word of God, the glory of the Lord? That name is F what Z Bah. Give me this back, please. 
verse 4 of chapter 62 of Isaiah. Verse 4 of chapter 62. Uh-huh. It will no longer be said of you, Judah, mm -hmm. Azuba. People will no longer look at you as somebody who has been abandoned or whose things, who prays is no longer moving the heart of God or moving the things of God. No longer will you be seen as somebody whose praise is like a kajik. Kajik, you know what the word is in French. Kajik, it means like a void. So you will be what? Continue. But Nor will it be. Nor will it any longer be said of you of your land, Shimama, desolate. Mm -hmm. But you will be called Fziba. Now let me break it down a little here. We know we're talking here about Israel. We're talking about the land that the God of Israel has given to the children of Israel. We know we're talking about the specific nation and the land. So we know it. But we also know that the word of God applies to us in its entirety. Hallelujah. So the word of God here, even though we know for the sake of theology, for the sake of a dogma, we know that this is talking about the land of Israel. Amen. But because the word of God also applies to us individually, we do know that this word of God is also speaking to us. So let me get it back. On the word, it says, you will be called F-Z-Bah. Now, when he says, my delight is in her, her here is not necessarily a woman. Hallelujah. It's the fact that the land, is, uh, in, uh, uh, the land Jerusalem, is called a her. You know what I'm saying? Just like uh, the church is called a her. So you and I, we are called a her. Uh, does it make sense? Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not in the identity of the gender, but it's the one whom has been married unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So we as being the her or being the delight of the Lord, it says, when he has now brought upon us the delight of himself. Why? Because we have now stayed in the righteousness of God. We have continued in the righteousness of Christ. As we have continued in the righteousness of Christ, he says that he will now be calling us have Ziba. But here's the thing. The same word of God says that uh, he will grant the desire of our heart if what? If we delight in the Lord. So the word of God is connected everywhere. He's reaffirming that he will now bring up so that the nations and the people we have to recognize. Because you will not live in this earth being a child of the Lord that is a working as according, according to the ways of the Lord. And then you will die unknown. Mm -mm. God wants to make his name known through somebody. Does it make sense? He put it this way. He said that the earth is a waiting for the revelation of what? The sons of God. The earth, the world is longing for the revelation of the sons of God. He says, go all unto the world. So he is intending through the righteousness of Christ to put upon us a mark that will let something on the earth that will be what I call, the, how is it in English? The legacy. My people of God. For you to receive the new name. He wants us to walk in his righteousness. Because he said, to whom who overcomes, it will be given a new name. There are certain ideas you cannot have until you have overcome certain things. You see, he has kept in his hand things that were not revealed to no one. But the Bible said that he kept it for the one he loves, for us who were called. So even when the world is attempting to identify and they're attempting to break through certain things, they will never know why, because some of them are held. The Bible talks about the hidden manna. What is a hidden manna? The hidden manna is what makes you thrive through the world, in the world, and makes you succeed in every step as you are living in this world, because your promise is not the world, your promise is heaven. 
Your hidden manna for you in this earth will be able for, for you. You will be able through that hidden manna or through that name that the Lord will give unto you. You will be able to take over territory. You will be able to function and to operate. But you must live in the righteousness of Christ. And it says, to he who overcomes. Now, let me tell you something. Some people called me one time, not long ago, last year. I said last year, last week. They told me, you see, you cannot do see so, so, and so, so, and so, unless you bribe people so that the so, so, and so, so, and so will be done. And then I told them, I say, this company that the Lord has given is not my company. It's the Lord company in whom he has placed me for the managing, the, what, the, the management of it. So it is like ministry. Amen? In ministry, you cannot defraud. You can't. So, as much as in ministry you cannot enter and defraud, you cannot also defraud in company, in business. And they say, no, you don't understand. In this country, for you to be able to have this, 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 you must bribe people. And the people themselves, they have made law. And that law says what they are supposed to do. But that law is only written for the international community. Meaning, when they go among the international community concert of states, they can say, oh, this is the law, so, so, and so, article, so, so, and so, 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 and so, just for the sake of other people. But inside there, the law is the person you see. I think you experienced something like that. So they told me, if you want to penetrate this market, you must do this, you must do that, you must do this. I told them, that not only I will not do that, but on the top of it, not only that I refuse to do that, but I will report you. But I won't report you to the government. I will report you to the Lord. Hallelujah. And they start saying, you don't understand. This is the way we live. But don't you know that the world is the way they live? That's the way the world lives. So we are not called to live that the way the world lives. The Lord of God, the Lord God, our God, wants us to live in his righteousness. So in his righteousness, we will have to operate the way the kingdom of God operates. Not long after, I received more favor than, than, than when you started. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I only see that every time you overcome, there is something which the enemy knows that you will receive. He comes ahead of it to try to distract you, to just to get you out of the way. But he said, to whom he who, to him who overcomes. Give me back the verse 4, please. Isaiah 62. Uh, Isaiah 62, verse 4. It will no longer be said of you, Judah, Azuba, abandon, nor will it any longer be said of your land, Shemama, desolate. But you will be called Ephziba, my delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you. Hello, hallelujah. When you are in the Lord, when you're walking in the ways of God, it may happen sometimes that as you go through trial, remember, through trial you will arrive, but as you go through trial, it may happen that uh, your trial looks like a desert. So it may happen that they will look at it as desolate. You know, desolate means that there are things on, but it does not function as it should be. Hallelujah. So it may happen that they look like desolate. It may happen that they look like abandoned. But the Lord wants you and I to remember, if we want to succeed, we cannot live righteousness. If we want to, you see, the difference between we and the children of the world is that the children of the world, their righteousness cannot be because they cannot be righteous. Amen? 
So the one who gives them, who empowered them to do certain things, we all know it is the enemy. Hallelujah. However, even if the enemy does empower them to do certain things, it works within the principle of God. For instance, God is the one who made heaven and earth. He is the one who made the rain and the sun. Hallelujah. So even if the enemy empowered them to go steal the seed, they will work within the establishment of the rain. That's why he says he let his rain fall on the good and the just. Uh, the, uh, unjust. Uh, he meant the just and the unjust. So them, their reward is already finished, is already gone. For us, our reward is to live for our generation a legacy that will be spoken as when the hand of God or the finger of God that has worked through our lives. He will provide and give unto us a new name. When we have overcome. Give me the verse 3, please. Go ahead. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. You will also be considered a crown of glory and splendor in the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God says, I will be considered. You will be. You got to put your name over there. Amen. Hallelujah. I will be. I, Joseph Israel, will be considered a crown of glory and splendor in the hand of my Lord. And a royal diadem exceedingly beautiful in the hand of my God. Now, I don't know how it sounds for you. But for me, it means it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Crown of glory. Now, this is what it means. Even when you sneeze, your speech will be glorious. No, I'm not joking. No, I'm serious. The crown of glory caused Paul to have the what? Handkerchief that was touching him to carry that same into the sick. Am I right? The crown of glory caused Peter to have his shadow to cast out even Demons. The crown of glory calls uh, whose name? Moses to come up and to be what? Completely transformed and transfigured. This is what I know from the word of God. To the one who is in righteousness, God does not have a problem to lift you up. Because he says, if you humble thyself under the mighty hand of God, he shall what? Lift you up. Up in when? Due time. You will also be considered a crown of glory and splendor in the hand of the Lord. That's what happened to Solomon. He lifted up Solomon. The queen of Sheba, she came, she arrived, she saw Solomon. And she said, I have heard certain things about you. But what I see and what I'm hearing from you is way far beyond what I have heard. But you see, what she heard caused her to be intrigued. And then she traveled all the way. By then, there was no uh, airplane. So she traveled uh, suddenly in the camels, on the camels. Travel so many miles to just go and hear for herself the wisdom that she has heard. That can you imagine the wisdom God has put on Solomon? They do not have internet, but he traveled all the way to the end of the world. The God we serve, He's able to take your name. And God deposit it in the mind of somebody else. Suddenly somebody wake up. He's a billionaire. He say, uh, hello, Henry. Are you Henry? Yes, you would think he's a scam. 
Because scammers are working the work of the devil. What? They are calling you and they are saying, okay, I, I am so so and so from Italy, Lobiritunio, Kobilisono, and uh, my husband or my wife have died, that uh, we have a uh, health, wealth, and uh, we want to pass on to you. He has left uh, 18 million dollars. And so when you see the email, you just shut it down. Because, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? That's the work of the enemy to try to distract you because let me tell you something. The one that God will assign will pick up the phone, call you, and bless you. Because the name, see, in the world of business, for instance, or in the world that is working, certain people who were doing whatever they were doing, they suddenly receive a call from another type of business, which is more powerful than them, telling them, hey, we want to either buy you out, or we want to sponsor you, or we want to do so, so, and so. They themselves, they did not make any application. They didn't send any application, any letter. But they have been heard of by somebody else. Last time we were talking, last Sunday, as we were, we were hearing the word of the Lord, I realized that the Lord said something specific in the message last Sunday. And in that message, he said that they will even go to court to bless you. So that was last Sunday. Monday, at what time? In the morning or what? What God said Sunday, Monday morning, he manifested in our life. $55,000. Poof! <laughs> in the morning of the word he said on Sunday. So for me, I know with certainty that what he speaketh is not for me to just hear it. It's for me to leave it. For he says, for you and for I, whatever we have given to the Lord, as we overcome, he will give us a new name. And that new name will be written on a white stone. White stone is glory. White stone represents glory. That's why Isaiah 62 talks about, you will be considered a crown of the Lord. Give me verse 2. Verse 2, mm -hmm. the nations will see your righteousness and, vind and vindication. The nation will see your righteousness and vindication. What does it mean, vindication? It means like a God is going to take your palabra. Hallelujah. He's going he, he gonna to prove you right. Hallelujah. He's going to lift you up. He will, they will see the vindication of the Lord. And all the kings will see what? We see your glory, mm -hmm. and you will be called by a new name which mm. the mouth of the Lord will designate. And I will be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will designate. Now, let me tell you something. When Abraham was brought, when Sarah was brought, when Abraham was brought, when Sarah was brought, he said to Sarahi, you will no longer be called Sarahi, but what? Sarah. For you will be what? A mother of many nations. People of God, I want you to remember this one. We have read the word of the Lord and we have taken the word of the Lord as a uh, basis of our upbringing, of our doctrine, of our understanding, of our instruction. We have to pass that level. To take now the word of the Lord as the, how do I call it? You know, when you go to, if you, if you, if, when people go to the doctor and they have a, uh, they, uh, no, they, they, have, they, they, they have a disease, uh, and then the doctor will make a diagnosis and then when they have found out whatever is going on, and then now they give the prescription. And now the, go, the person has to go now and take the prescription to address the sickness, right? That's the word of God for you and I today. When I see that I'm struggling, I go to the Lord to see Lord diagnose me. Hallelujah. 
And then the Lord will diagnose me. He will MRI me. And now he will give me the prescription. He says in the prescription that uh, the nation will see my righteousness. So this includes or entail that I have walked in righteousness in the Lord. Are you what I'm saying? Or if I haven't, then I must start walking in righteousness in the Lord. Because anyhow, he says, he will cause that righteousness to be seen by nation. Somebody who's not living with me over here, who is somewhere in China, who is somewhere in Korea, who is somewhere in Cameroon, can say, oh, this one is a true man of God. He does not know me. You know what I'm saying? He does not know me. He does not live with me. He does not dine with me. He does not sit with me. But when the person who is somewhere, whose God will speak to, the person take up his phone and says, Ah, God said I should bless you. So, what the Lord is trying to do in your life is that before you go to meet the one whom God has assigned for you to meet in order to start something, the Lord will already speak of you to the person. We see that with the life of who? Paul and Ananias. Before Ananias went to meet Paul, the Lord already spoke of Paul to Ananias. We see that also in the life of Simon. With... Uh, uh, so, uh, Cornelius Cornelius son so that uh, you will find Simon who was in the house of another Simon but before he arrived the word of God said that the Lord has already spoken of him hallelujah so I know for certainty that the new name that God will give you is a name that will make you be seen before people as the righteousness of Christ. Meaning, even if they knew you before as a failure, because of the new name, they will see you as somebody else. Hallelujah. So the nation will see your righteousness and vindication by God, and all the kings will see your glory. And you will be called by a new name. When you are called by a new name, the way you think change. The way you speak change. The way you function change. You see, Abraham, when he became Abraham, the way he was operating definitely has to change. Why? Because now he knows that in him, the confirmation of the word of God has come. Listen, somebody was saying that, he's a man of God. He says, he says, queen, because they carry the name queen, they walk and they dress in a certain way. Slaves. They are naked. Why? Because they need to be beat up. So <laughs> they need to be slipped. So he was saying that some women think that the glory is the body. So they are naked. When I say naked, is the word. Because they dress naked. <laughs> yeah, they dress naked. <laughs> Hallelujah. But as they do so, it's because they do not know the value. It's because they do not know their glory. Hallelujah. If they understood their value, then we understand that they are queens in the Lord. They are princess of the Lord. And queen and princess in the Lord, they don't talk however. It doesn't make sense. They don't behave however. So by him saying that, what he means is that when you have a new name, the way you think, the way you operate, the way you function, the way you speak, the way you deal also changes. And that new name, the word of the Lord says, that will be the name with which the mouth of the Lord will designate. In another word, you cannot call yourself something until the Lord has called you that thing. 
Now the Lord has said, you are an overcomer. The Lord has said, you are a winner. The Lord has said, you are a victorious. The Lord has said, you are a mighty warrior. I told you last time. I have been in places since the Lord has started the company of himself. Where the people around in the, in the physical and in the understanding of the physical, they had way much more possession than wealth. But because I now know what assignment did the Lord has sent and put me in, I was now able to speak to them with certainty. Why? Because I know I have been sent. Give me verse 1. 62 verse 1. It says, for Zion's sake, I will not be silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet until a righteousness and, and, and vindication go forth as brightness and a salvation goes forth like a burning torch. All it means is this. Because I know who God made me to be for the season and the hour he has chosen. When I arrive in all, you arrive somewhere for the sake of who God has called you to be, you cannot be quiet until what God said they must do, they will do. They will say, oh, call me yesterday. <laughs> I call me yesterday. <laughs> call me tomorrow. And then you're thinking, I don't want to bother. No. The word of the Lord says, I will not be silent. I will not be quiet until what God said must happen, happens. Let me say something. When the Lord appoints you, when the Lord assigns you to any task, and he tells you that he wants you to bring the fruit or he wants you to bring the evidence of the fruit. You cannot be in your own shoe by thinking, no, I don't want to bother. No. When God says, go tell to the king to give so, so, and so, you will tell it until the, the king gives it. Let me take the example of her. Uh, uh, his name? Moses and Pharaoh. Moses said, oh Lord, I, I don't, I don't, the first of all, I don't know how to communicate. And Pharaoh is not just an easy thing. He went the first time. He said, God said. Why did he go? Because God told him to go. And when he went, he said, God said. Pharaoh said, I am going to listen. But you see, when he knows that the assignment for which he was sent was not for attempt, but it was for result, he did not care whether Pharaoh was going to be bad or not. Hallelujah. He kept on going upon the word of God, upon the direction of God, until he received the... the um, uh, the relief for which he has been sent for. When you know it is God who told you go there to get this. The Lord Jesus said, when you go, you see a colt that is tied by the crossroad. When you go, untie it and bring it. And if somebody asks you, what is that for? You will say the Lord has need of him. Now, I'm going to go a little further. I will say, if that would have tried to prevent you, you will keep saying, the Lord has need of that one. You will not return empty-ended. 
Because you know your assignment was not to go see if it was tight and go give a report. Mm -mm. Your assignment was go to untie it and bring it back. So now because you know your assignment is not only to look upon and give a report, but your assignment is to look upon, transform it, build it in order to see the glory of God, then you cannot let go. You cannot be quiet until what God said must be is happen. So your new name will give you the drive. I will take President Trump. When he was president, he has made for himself an assignment for which he believed greatly. And he believed that he ought to do what? Make America great again. You are all well aware that whether he wanted to do good or not, the people who were contrary to the ways he wanted to do fought him in the open. How do we know? Because the fight that they did then, three years after, was proven to be false. I even I'm saying the accusation. I'm not saying he's a holy man. I'm saying he had an idea. And that idea that he had, he wanted to fulfill that idea. And they fought him. And they did not fought him easy. They fought him with everything they can find anyhow, anyway. He stood. But you see, he's just a man who has not been like a man or a woman like you. If a worldly man, if a person who is not called a man of God can stand on what he believes and fight, how much more you and I? For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be, I will not keep quiet until a righteousness and vindication go forth as brightness and a salvation goes forth like a burning torch. Give me verse two. The nations will see your righteousness and vindication by God and all the glory will see and all the kings will see your glory and you will be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will designate. Take Isaiah chapter 55, and then we're going to, uh, as I say 55, 65, we're going to hand there. And give me from verse 10 to verse 15. Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, 65 verse 10. Verse 10. And the yes, plain, that's good. And the plain of Sharon will be a place for flocks to graze. And the valley of Acor, a resting place for herds. For my people who seek me, who long for me and require my presence in their lives. Verse 11. But you who abandon, but you who abandon, turn away from the Lord, who forget and ignore my holy mountain Zion, who set a table of God, the Babylonian God of fortune, and who fill a, a, jug, a jug of mixed wine for many, for many, the God of faith, of faith. I will dis destine you for the sword, says the Lord, and all of you will bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen or obey. But you, but you did what was evil in my sight and chose that in which I did not delight. Verse 13. Therefore, the Lord God says this, Listen carefully, my servants will eat, but you will be hungry. Indeed, my servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. Indeed, my servant will rejoice but you will be put to shame. Uh, hey, let me quickly, on the 13, 
Listen carefully. He's talking to everyone who has decided to depart from the ways of the Lord. Amen? Who decided to turn themselves to any other God but the Lord God. Amen? He says, it will come a time when famine will hit, when dryness will hit, when lack will hit. But when it happens, he says, as long as you are servant, you will eat even in the time of famine. Hallelujah. It's as long as you are servant, you will drink in the, in the time of drought. As long as you are servant, you will rejoice even in the time of shame. Because you will be called by a new name. Continue, please. Verse 14. Verse 14. Indeed, my servant will shout, will shout for joy. Indeed, my servant will shout for joy from a happy from heart. a happy heart. But you will cry out. But you will cry out with a heavy heart. With a heavy heart. And you shall wail. And you shall wail and hold, and hold from a broken from a broken spirit. spirit. And you will leave your and you will leave your name behind, behind to my chosen one uh -huh. who will use it as a curse. Uh -huh. So, in another word, those who decided to leave the ways of the Lord, they will not be shining or they will not be lifted. But the ways and the attitude and the behaviors and the names that they have made for themselves will only be used as a curse to say that you cannot do like this one. We talk about Achan. Hallelujah. The Aiken, today you cannot name your child Aiken. You know what I'm saying? Even if you have drank, drunk um, beer in your nose, <laughs> even though you know some people. Anyway, I'm talking about the people of the Lord. Hallelujah. So continue. And, and then. And the Lord God will put you to death, mm -hmm. but he will call his servant by another but name. But he will call his servant by another name, which is. A much greater name. A much greater name. Just as the name Israel was greater than the name. Just Jacob. as the name Israel was greater than the name. Jacob. Jacob. Hallelujah. The Lord is establishing a simple truth, a simple reality. He will call us. He will call you. He will call me by a new name. In that new name, you will carry on the assignment, the mental, and the anointing that is attached to that new name. Now, I will say, the Lord is calling us by a, oh no, the Lord has called us by a new name. The new name is F, are you still following with me? And the new name is that he delights in me. You got to put your name there. Hallelujah. And he said, if the Lord delights in you because you delight in him, he will what? Grant you the desires of your heart. Let me repeat it again. Your new name is F. Ziba. Because today you can no longer pray with, Lord, please, will you do? No. Today you will pray by, you the devil release what God has already commanded. Hallelujah. For you are called F. Ziba. Give me now the verse 4 of verse 62. Isaiah chapter 62. We're going to hit on verse 4. Isaiah 62 verse 4. It will no longer be said of you, Judah, Azuba, abandoned, nor will it any longer... Remember, it means there was a time when they were called Azuba because of whatever attitude and behavior they had. But you see, the covenant of God is greater than the sins of a person. Are ah, you know what I'm saying? For proof, 
when he called Israel out of Egypt, even when they sinned, he did not abandon them in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Because he is faithful to his word and his covenant. So he said that we no longer call you uh, abandoned. That we no longer call you she mama. mama. But now you will be called. Now you will see he will no longer be said of you. He will no longer be said of you. But you will be called for God will be the one assigning that name on you. You will be called F, F Ziba. Ziba. My delight is in her. Now you got to put your name. In We're going to read this together. I will no longer be, I will, it will no longer be said of me, Joseph Israel, Azuba. Nor will it any longer be said of my land, Shimama. But I will be called F. Ziba, for the delight of the Lord is in me, and my land is married. For the Lord delights in me, and to me, to him, my land will be married, armed, and protected by the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you're going to say after me so we can say that together. It will no longer. Now you remember, you got to put your name there. Don't put my name. Don't put Judah either. Put your name. Amen. It will no longer. Be said of me, Joseph Israel, Azuba, nor will it any longer be said of my land, Shimama, but I will be called Efziba, for the delight of the Lord is in me. And my land is married. For the Lord delights in me. And to him, my land will be married and, and protected by the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.